most of it's Diesel Donnie and his telling the Mets to rip heaters. If that's what's heaters. Gr- if that's what's going to get this offense turned around, then give Diesel Donnie Stevenson all the credit in the world, right? The offense scoring 13 runs in two games after they've been averaging three runs per game. That's what I liked about the Mets over the weekend. Ron Darling calling Friday night rock bottom, and then the team responds with two wins in a row, and the bats come alive. That's what I liked about the Mets this weekend. I want to believe that this is the start of something, right? I want to believe that the Mets, beyond Lindor, who was 0 for 5 last night, we'll get to that later, I want to believe that they've found something. I want to believe in the Conforto go-ahead homer on Saturday. I want to believe in Alonzo bases clearing double on Sunday. I want to believe Jeff McNeil 4 for 6 yesterday. I want to believe Dom Smith with multiple multi-hit games over the weekend. I want to believe in all of that. Those are the things that I like from the Mets this weekend. You know what I didn't like? I didn't like what went down with Edwin Diaz last night, and how could you? You had Edwin Diaz, who actually has had eight scoreless innings and outings going back to April 10th of this season. He's pitching very well. Most We've talked about the Diaz rules. Now, this didn't necessarily violate any of the Diaz rules, But you could not like how this went down last night. He's pitching in back-to-back games. He comes in with a four-run lead, which we can debate why he was in this game anyway. He walks Didi Gregorius on four pitches. That's a bad sign. Then an RBI triple to Quinn. He walks Joyce. Out comes pitching coach Jeremy Hefner before Reese Hoskins. Reese Hoskins. Diaz tells him he has a tight back. Oh, by the way, he's at 24 pitches, which is the most he's had this season in one inning. And they decide to keep him in the game. Next batter, Hoskins, smokes an almost home run. The Mets got so lucky on this one, Moose. So, so lucky that that ball bounced off the railing and did not hit a seat. I'm talking inches, centimeters yeah. on any of either side. And that's just an absolute dagger just straight into your heart, and you thought that Friday night was rock bottom for them, it would have been rock bottom part two. But no, they get the lucky break. But I just, I don't know what the Mets are doing there. More specifically, I don't know what Luis Rojas is thinking there. And I, the thing about Rojas, Moose, is I want to I wanna like Rojas. I want to love Luis Rojas, right? Like, I want to believe a guy who paid his dues, who grow, grows up in the organization, a baseball lifer, has got this great rapport with the players. Like, I want to love this guy. But I'm sorry. Like, Luis Rojas is not distinguishing himself as the manager of the New York Mets, and I know it hasn't been long, and I hope I'm wrong. But I just I feel like Rojas is leaving a lot to be desired. Now, listen, they won the game. Thank you, Jerry's Familia, for coming in, striking out Bryce Harper. That's it. They win the series. They take two out of three. We'll see what happens in St. Louis. But I hated how that went down with Diaz last night. He's got a stiff back. He's on back-to-back days. Get him out of that game. Save the pitcher from himself. Yeah, I mean, no excuses. I mean, you you ran through it all. So, I mean, for Rojas, I mean, you could want him to be successful all you want. It's a matter of whether or not he's a good manager. And we've had a lot of Met fans be critical. I mean, last night was Familia saving the manager from himself because it was a terrible decision to bring Diaz into the game, number one. Number two, when, you know, he's got that stiff back 24 pitches to, to keep him in the game, um, you know, they get the benefit of, the, the railing there at, down in Philadelphia uh, should have been a, a Reese Hoskins game tie three run home run ends up being a double. Um, so you look at that scenario all the way around for the Mets. Yeah, I mean they survived. I mean at least Familia comes in and is able to cement the victory. They hold on for dear life at eight seven. But you know all the criticism that we've had against Rojas about this team and yes, not not a lot is on purely and solely just on the manager um, when you look not. at baseball uh, nowadays. It's just not. I mean, a lot of it uh, is collaborative when you put the lineup together, when the roster's cut. Everything that we look at, uh, pinch hitters, looking at the analytics, looking at uh, splits and everything th- that we, we see and in, in how baseball decisions are made nowadays. And, yeah, I, I think Rojas is not doing himself any favors here with some of the decisions. And then the rationalization after the game at times makes you know little to no sense. I'm, I really don't care about when the hitter's coming up in the order, um, if you're the Mets after the game. I, when the pitcher's coming up in the batting order, I, I really don't care. I mean, that it's a scenario where, you know, 
the Mets the Mets get bailed out by Familia. They easily, yeah. I mean, the Phillies, if not, uh, you know, for the railing, the Phillies would have tied the game up on the on the Reese Hoskins home run. Ends up being a double. And the decision making you now question with Rojas in the dugout. He's got to be better than that. He really does be, because when you, I just did. I was stunned back to back games that Diaz is coming into that game. You know, after the bases clearing double by Alonso, you have the eight four lead. I don't understand why you need to bring Edwin Diaz into that game last night. Now Diaz was a disaster. We know he's dealing with a stiff back. Why he remains in that game is another Ugh. question as well. I, I I I don't I don't understand it, and I don't want to just go to the negative here because again there were a lot of things that I really liked about what the Mets showed over the weekend. Right? It wasn't perfect. A lot of times it's like you know you're on a speedboat and someone's water skiing off the back and they come out of the skis and they're just hanging on to that thing for dear life the rope trying not to let go but there were things that I did like again I like the offense coming through I like VR not being afraid to play baseball as he said when he goes home on catching the the Phillies napping and I saw so many people on Twitter saying I love it when another team pulls Mets moves you know like they caught the Phillies napping after Hoskins, who, you know, obviously was wearing the goat horns, he's misplays a ball off of, uh, what was it, Peraza at that point? And, and you had VR, who just totally took advantage. I absolutely love that kind of stuff. I love when a guy says, I'm not afraid to play baseball. Maybe that's the edge that the Mets really need here. And the, and, and the bats came alive. So phenomenal. I just, I, I couldn't get past it with Familia, excuse me, with Diaz last night, because again, you're basically having a bullpen game today. DeGrom asked for another day, so he's not pitching until Tuesday. You had Diaz who pitched on Saturday. Why did you need him in that game last night? Again, a, a lot, and, and I, I don't no, want to go, I don't wanna go typical Mets fan here. Like, I hate being that person who's like, they won the game. Why can you only look at the negative? And it's not that. I am looking at the positives. I hope that Diesel Donnie, is, is, this is real, and I hope that they are able to hit. It just stuck with me because it bothered me so much. Everything about that Diaz outing, everything about it. Yeah, well, I think it bothered every Met fan watching it last night, so you're not alone. And I, I think the the decision-making of Rojas, what do you want to have as a manager that doesn't you know, get in the way of a team? Now, they're 500 through 22 games. They're 11-11. We've talked about you know the positives with this team, with the starting rotation. You know, Peterson was good last night for his five innings of work. We've talked about the negatives with this team, the hit situational hitting, or really the all-around hitting. And maybe this weekend down in Philadelphia, after what we witnessed on Friday night, maybe this maybe this team in Philadelphia and this lineup down in Philly found themselves a little bit offensively because they've been there's too many good hitters in this lineup to think they were going to be this bad in every offensive category they've been dreadful in. You know, I'm. I'm going to look at it as being a learning mistake for Luis Rojas. The experience level is not there as a major league manager. He's worked his way up. I can understand Mets fans that were irate with the decision last night and how the Mets handled that late game decision. But you learn from your mistakes. At least it didn't cost them a game. We're not waking up this Monday morning That's and it's true. a 9-8, you know, Philadelphia Phillies victory. And the Mets are, you know, a couple games under the 500 mark at 10-12 and 12, and we're ripping Luis Rojas to the high heavens. He deserves to be criticized because... The baseball decisions during the course of the game last night almost cost his team the victory. And not having a touch and a feel and not being able to go in and get Diaz when he's dealing with that stiff back and keep him in their game and they get bailed out by, you know, a railing down there in Philadelphia. Fine. All good. So now they're eight and seven. They're on the road in St. They win the game eight to seven. They're on the road tonight in St. Louis. It's going to be a bullpen game for all of those things. When you want to kind of be a progressive forward thinking organization, it made little to no sense to have Diaz in the game. You get him out. Familia, amazingly enough, bails the team out. They get the final out, notch the 8-7 win. You focus on the positives. This this offense is starting to show a little bit of life for sure. You like that aspect of it, and you hope it's just a sign of things to come because we know the rotation has been brilliant. How weird are the ground rules in Philly, too? I, yeah. I mean, I was surprised that that's actually in play, that railing, considering it's above the scoreboard and then set back, and I was just really surprised. And the Mets caught a break. And this is the second time this season they've gotten really lucky. The Conforto hit by pitch RBI, that was very lucky when he kind of leaned into one. And now last night they get another lucky break so the reason why i feel critical and i feel like it's okay to criticize Luis for today is because it's not any of the strategy or anything brilliant that he did that bailed out the mets 
It was the ground rules in Philly and the fact that you have replay. That's what bailed out the Mets because that was called a three-run home run on the field. And it's, it's, it's getting my blood pressure up. However, again, we'll see what happens when they go down to St. Louis, and we'll see if this thing is real. And I'm curious for the Met fan, like, did you walk away from that more encouraged by what you saw from the last two games in the series? You put together a big first inning against Zach Wheeler, and then you kind of hang on there. Taiwan Walker, Moose, he's great until he's just not, you know, and unfortunately gives up a two-run game-tying home run in the middle game of that series. And then Michael Conforto comes in with the big heroics with the solo home run, the go-ahead home run on Saturday. Like, I'm curious for the Met fan, did you feel encouraged, and do you feel like this team is starting to turn a corner, May, a new month, new attitude, new everything for the Mets? Or did it feel like, man, what are we doing? How, how, how did the Mets make that one a near miss, which would have been not a gut punch, Moose. That's a combination right to your face. I mean, that's a right, right, left. That's not just a gut punch. If they had lost that game last night, it would have been an absolute nightmare. No, it would have been, but they didn't, right? So it, it would have, could have, would have, should have. I, I think you, I think you, you look at the negative. I think you got to focus on the positive. I think you got to focus on the fact that Conforto was three for four last night, that McNeil was four for six, that they had 17 hits as a team. Yes, they were only five for 15 with runners in scoring position. That you score six runs in that top half of the eighth inning, you know, after the, the Phillies take the lead. Um, you know, to take a, at that stage what you thought was a commanding 8 4 lead. You hold on for dear life for the 8 7 win. It would have been a disastrous loss, but it wasn't. It was a win. So I I give you I I really think if you you want to focus in that this offense and maybe it is you know Donnie uh, you know helping this team out uh, as Alonzo and Conforto were joking around with about it after the game you know swinging at fa- we we focused a lot last week whether it be you know Rojas mentioned that this team was a little tight last year haunting them it's in their heads everything with this team and the sit- lack of situational hitting or really just the overall lack of offense with this lineup for hitters that you know are really really good and now they're starting to hit and i think that's where i'll focus in on the positive with this team and Rojas the big negative to me is he's got to have a better touch and feel for this team. He really does. And the explanations after games about why he made certain baseball decisions has got to be a little bit more on point than what it is. There have been moves that he's made this year that have been really, really good. There's other decisions that he's made this year where you severely question what Rojas was doing in the dugout. And it's not a matter of just the lineup or how the rotation is set, any of that. It's a matter of in-game personnel decisions. And last night was a misstep. He, he better thank the lucky stars that Familia steps into that game and bails him out. Because if the Mets lose that game, Maggie, we would have taken one call after another, absolutely drilling Luis Rojas throughout the course of the day today. Well, and also thank you to Jonathan VR, you know, who heads up base running and beyond the Pilar home run that got them on the board to lead off that eighth inning, which ended up being a wild inning. I appreciate the grit there. I appreciate the heads up. I appreciate the aggressiveness. We haven't even gotten to Jose Alvarado, this guy. I mean, I I did not like what I saw from him, obviously, on Friday night. Listen, I'm all for let the guys play. I like the personalities in baseball. Bat flips don't bother me. I think if you hit like what Jose Bautista did in the playoffs, you should be able to do the moonwalk to first, cabbage patch to second, cartwheels to third, and then just do the worm home. Like, you come through in that kind of a situation, I don't care how much you pimp it, right? I think you should be allowed to do that. I think, guys, having rivalries is great. I don't like when dudes are throwing at each other's heads, and whether that was intentional or not, going back to Conforto, whatever. I mean, you really can't step to someone like that and think that the ba- that, that benches are not going to clear. You can't oh, get course, that yeah. into, into somebody's face and then be like, what, me? It's like, no, you, you can celebrate, but you can't call somebody out like that, like what Alvarado was doing to Dom Smith on Friday night and think that there's going to be no repercussion there. So, you know, I, I understand why he would get suspended. Well, the He's repercussion should have been the Mets should have started a fight. I mean, as, as Darley yeah, mentioned on the broadcast I, I, I on Friday night, I mean, the Mets, yeah. should have, the Mets should have done something about it, right? And, and Darling was clearly bothered by the fact that, you he know, and, and Dom Smith after the game said, well, he can meet me in the tunnel if he really wants to do something. Alvarado knew what he was doing. 
because he was bothered by Dom Smith running his mouth when he threw high and tight to Conforto. And obviously Alvarado hit somebody who was a McNeil earlier in the game, earlier in that inning. Um, and, you know, I look at it, if, if you're going to call a team out, as Alvarado was doing, and Dom said something to Dom Smith to grab his attention right before as he was walking his way to the dugout. Yeah, I mean, do you expect the benches to clear? Now the question should have been, now the question is spinning it forward is, you know, should the Mets have done something about it? You know, do you, do you start a fight if you're Dom Smith? If you're getting called out by somebody and an opponent like he was and getting disrespected, is that the time where, yeah, um, we're not going to allow that. You want to you want to run your mouth. You want to celebrate a strikeout. It's not a matter of pimping a home run. This is somebody that was that was calling you out after a strikeout and basically say, "Come get me." Well, why didn't the Mets go get him? Well, I I have a couple theories on that. One is that you throw punches, you're getting suspended. Yeah, I the get Mets it. the Mets start and stop of this season and guys trying to find themselves and trying to get into a rhythm. To me, that's more important. And staying on the field and staying in the lineup every day, I think is probably quick math more important than some, you know, BS reliever for the Phillies, right? Than than trying to be some prove some kind of macho point or whatever. I know that Darling was upset about it or he was disappointed maybe that the Mets didn't finish it or didn't come a little bit more aggressive there or that that Dom didn't come a little more aggressive there. But I think Dom I think the Mets are just so focused on themselves and wanted to get their offense going. They prioritize that more than what well, I'm gonna start a fight. I'm gonna throw punches. I'm gonna get suspended I'm going to take myself out of the lineup when that's the last thing any of these Mets want. All they talk about is we just want to play every day and try to find ourselves here and get in our groove. I get it. That moment, you think Dom Smith is thinking about suspension? All of that is going through his head at that moment? I think moment? someone's saying not worth it, not worth it. Yeah, not maybe. Worth it, as I back. mean, you know, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not saying that he should have done something, but I can understand where if you have another, uh, an, an opponent that is obviously disrespecting you, Right. And there's been issues. And he goes out there and he calls Dom Smith basically to the mound. And the Mets don't do anything. I can understand being critical of that look. I can understand where you look at it. I don't well, think they're the thinking Mets won about. The series. I don't. I, I know won they won the, six of their I, last nine. Against I understand this all year. that. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that you're you have an opponent that's disrespecting you. Right. You know, and you know that there are teams that in the past that there would have been a full out brawl. There of really course, and the 86 Mets and, are one of them, but the 2021 I mean, Mets at, are not the 86 Mets. No, I, I understand Different that, kind of but it's it, I, I I'm not I'm not saying that there yeah. you have to or you should have or it's a case that the the Mets are, are are weak because they did not. I can understand where Darling is coming from when you look at baseball and you have an opponent that is clearly just disrespect, and that's not going to go away. I would not imagine. I would imagine that there is going to be a dust up. There's going to be something else that happens when these two teams meet uh, in the rest of the regular season. Alvarado running his mouth. The Mets obviously have a memory of it. They know what happened on Friday night. I'm not telling you that that was the right time or the place, but I can understand where Darling was coming from on the broadcast on Friday night, saying, "Well, if you have somebody calling you out on the mound, then that's the time for you as a team, and if you're Dom Smith, to finish the storyline." And they did it. 